In the previous video, we understood the concept of nucleic acid hybridization and probes. We learned that the basis of nucleic acid hybridization is the complementary base pairing. Let's now understand what do we mean by blotting. The term blot refers to the membrane on which biological molecules such as proteins and nucleic acids are adsorbed or immobilized. And the process of transferring these molecules from a gel to a membrane, followed by their detection on the membrane, is known as blotting. When the macromolecule involved is DNA, the technique is known as southern blotting. Southern is the last name of the scientist who first blotted DNA. He is Sir Edwin Meller Southern. By analogy, blotting involving RNA is known as northern blotting. And for protein, this technique is known as western blotting. Both southern and northern blotting techniques are based on nucleic acid hybridization. Let's now study southern blotting in detail. Southern blotting has been used for the detection of a specific DNA fragment in a given mixture of DNA fragments or total cell DNA. Let's understand the details of this technique step by step. Suppose we have isolated genomic DNA from bacteria. Now we want to find out whether a gene or DNA sequence of interest is present in this bacterial genome or not. Recall that. The researcher already knows the nucleotide composition of the target DNA sequence. In the first step, the bacterial DNA is digested with a restriction enzyme. This step results in thousands of DNA fragments of various sizes. This is because the restriction enzyme cuts the chromosomal DNA at many different sites within the chromosome. Again, the researcher already knows that. The target DNA sequence would be present within a specific restriction enzyme site. Therefore, that restriction enzyme is used for the step of DNA digestion. The second step is the DNA gel electrophoresis. The separation of DNA fragments resulting from the first step is done by gel electrophoresis. The DNA fragments get separated according to their molecular weights. Here we need to note something. These separated DNA fragments are double-stranded. But, for hybridization step, we require single-stranded DNA fragments. Therefore, before moving to the next step, these DNA fragments are denatured in the gel. This is done by exposure of gel to mild alkali. The gel is soaked in a denaturing solution which contains sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide denatures the DNA by disrupting hydrogen bonds between the two complementary strands. In the third step, blotting is done. This means, the DNA fragments are transferred from the gel to a suitable membrane. This membrane can be nitrocellulose membrane, or nylon membrane. Nowadays, the most preferred membrane for such transfer of nucleic acids is nylon membrane. This is because it has a high tensile strength and better binding capacity for nucleic acids. So, how this transfer is carried out? You all must have come across this diagram showing transfer step of southern blotting in your books. This is the traditional way to transfer the DNA to the membrane. The basis of this transfer is the capillary action. Let's have a look at the transfer assembly. This is a tray filled with a suitable transfer buffer. A support for gel and membrane is kept in this buffer. This is usually a glass plate. An absorbent paper or blotting papers are placed on this support. These are placed such that they imbibe the buffer. They act as a wick. Next, the gel containing DNA is placed on the top of it. A nylon membrane of the same size as that of the gel is placed over it. Again, a thick stack of blotting papers or absorbent paper is placed over the membrane. This is followed by 3 to 4 inches of paper towels. 
and this complete stack of gel, membrane, blotting papers, and paper towels are pressed down by putting a weight on top. The buffer or liquid from the tray now rises through the gel taking with it the DNA molecules. Once the DNA molecules reach the nylon membrane they become adsorbed tightly to the membrane and are retarded. The remaining liquid passes through the paper and is absorbed by the paper towels placed at the top. During this transfer, the DNA fragments retain the same pattern of separation they had on the gel. Another method to transfer DNA is, by using the electric field. This method is similar, to the procedure I have already explained, in the video lecture on western blotting. The difference is that here, we are transferring negatively charged DNA molecules, from the gel to the membrane instead of proteins. The next step is hybridization and washing. In this step, the nylon membrane is now incubated with, many copies of a nucleic acid probe. Let's say a labeled single-stranded DNA molecule, under appropriate conditions. We know that. Probe will bind to the target sequence by complementary base pairing and form a double stranded DNA hybrid. So, the probe hybridizes with the DNA fragment that is complementary to it. Unbound probes are removed by washing. In the fifth step, detection of the bound probe is carried out. We find the location of the double-stranded hybrid formed in the previous step. The probe is detected by autoradiography, fluorescence or a color change, depending on what label we have used in the probe. So, these were the main steps of southern blotting technique. Let's summarize today's lecture. In southern blotting, a mixture of DNA fragments is prepared by restriction digestion. These DNA fragments are then separated by gel electrophoresis. Next they are transferred and immobilized to a solid support such as nylon membrane. Once immobilized, the DNA fragments present on the membrane are now incubated with a specific probe. The hybridization takes place between the probe and the DNA fragment that has complementary base pairs. In the last step, the location of the hybrid is detected by detection of the probe. I hope this lecture is helpful to you. In the next lecture, we will study northern blotting. Thank you for watching.